time. Welcome, everyone. Uh, it's great to have you all here. You may notice there are two speakers on the slides up front, and there's only one of me. Uh, unfortunately, Lee Wynn could not join us in person today. Don't worry, she was able to pre-record all her slides. She's got a, a great portion of the presentation today, and we have some of her colleagues here who can help answer questions at the end. Uh, so thank you, everyone, uh, for uh, putting up with this hybrid presentation. Uh, but I'll get started first. I'm Rob Scott, uh, and I'll hand it right over to Li Wen to introduce herself. Hello, my name is Li Wen Wu. I am a software engineer at AWS, focusing on AWS VPC networking for Kubernetes. My first major Kubernetes contribution was design and the development of AWS VPC CNI plugin for Kubernetes networking over AWS VPC. I am a active member of Gateway API community. Here, I'm going to show you how we implemented Gateway API on top of AWS VPC lattice. I'm sorry I couldn't meet you in person. Hopefully, I will see you in person in future. Cool. Uh, it's so sad that Lu Wing couldn't be here, but uh, we'll have a great presentation. Uh, she's got some great content throughout this uh, uh, presentation today. My name is Rob Scott. I'm a software engineer at Google. Uh, you can find me uh, all over the place. Uh, definitely happy to connect uh, and talk about any of these topics at any point. Uh, let's talk, get right into it. Uh, let's talk about the APIs here. Now, I may have skipped over it at the beginning, but we're talking about two APIs here. We're talking about multi-cluster services and gateway API. So before we go any further, how many people have used multi-cluster services? Okay, a handful. That's, that's impressive, actually. Uh, how many people have used gateway API? Okay, a few more. That's great. Uh, I, I'm very biased. I'm one of the maintainers of gateway API, uh, along with uh, Nick, Shane, and some great people over there. Uh, so, we're very interested in both Gateway API and how it could interact with multi-cluster service because these are both brand new Kubernetes APIs that have kind of evolved together. And we're talking about how they can work uh, in parallel. So first, there's Gateway API. And there's a lot of talks at KubeCon about Gateway API, so I'm not going to go into lots of details here. But understand that a gateway, in this case, when we're talking about cloud providers, which we are today, largely represents a, a cloud load balancer. Uh, then routing would be your routing configuration. So we have HTTP route and a bunch of other protocols represented with different route types. And then the service is really, in this case, just the group of endpoints that you want to route to. So in this case, we're, we have a route for Acme store, and that's doing some traffic splitting between store v1 and store v2. So this is a pretty straightforward gateway API example. Now, multi-cluster services are maybe a little bit more complicated to explain. So to understand multi-cluster services, you have to understand the concept of a cluster set. And a cluster set is a group of connected services. Uh, and in this case, we're going to say we have an east, west, and central cluster. And we're going to say that we have a service in one of those clusters, and we want to share it, export it to the other clusters so they can also access this service. So what we do is we create a service export, and that service export is going to say to your multi-cluster service implementation, this service right here should be made available to all the other clusters in this cluster set. And what happens is you get service imports in those other clusters automatically, all throughout the cluster set. So that means you have a DNS name and IP address, just like a service, in all those other clusters that you can use to access these endpoints, even if they're not in your cluster. Now, that's kind of the basic example of multi-cluster services, but kind of the, the next level is that you might have endpoints in more than one cluster that you want to kind of merge together into one large kind of global multi-cluster service. And in that case, there's the concept of namespace, name sameness. And in the multi-cluster world, that means that two services that are in the same namespace and have the same name are going to be considered the same service. So if you export both of them, they're going to get merged together, and a service import is going to reference endpoints from either cluster. That's an important concept as we keep on going and start to layer Gateway API on top of this. So 
we made it this far, you may be wondering, well, how do you combine these two APIs? We've got multi-cluster service, we've got gateway API. Well, we spent a lot of time talking about that. Uh, as you'd expect in Kubernetes, it takes a while to nail down these standards, and there's a lot of nuance here. So if you're interested, we, write, we wrote a whole gap, that's a gateway enhancement proposal, about how these two APIs interact. And there's a lot of detail here. I'm gonna try and give you the very high level summary, which is that anywhere you can use a service in, uh, in Gateway API, you can use a service import. So anywhere you can use a service, you can replace that with a multi-cluster service. Uh, and that's what we're gonna co be covering in today's talk. So let's go back to that example we showed at the beginning where Gateway API was doing some traffic splitting between store v1 and store v2. Let's say that our app developers got a little creative and said, well, actually my store v2 service, it's going to span multiple clusters now, or maybe it's gonna be in a different cluster. What you would do is instead of just referencing a service, you just replace that one detail and it becomes a service import. You're referencing a multi-cluster service and a multi-cluster set of endpoints. And one other detail you might've noticed there is that's what we call a multi-cluster gateway. There's, there's not much to it. A multi-cluster gateway is just a gateway that supports referencing multi-cluster services. So part of the reason you might be here is that this, uh, there's a lot of APIs here, and you might be curious how cloud providers are translating these APIs into cloud resources. And that's what this next section is going to talk about. Uh, first, I'll hand it over to Li Wen, and she's gonna talk about how they're doing it for uh, AWS VPC Lattice. Let's talk about EKS implementation if of we can the get Gateway some API through AWS Gateway API controller. First, we introduce a new Gateway class, Amazon VPC Lattice. And the AWS Gateway API controller will reconcile gateways and HTTP routes on the Amazon VPC Lattice Gateway class and create corresponding VPC lattice resources accordingly. TLDR in Kubernetes, Gateway APIs is the control plane, where VPC lattice is the data plane. We have open sourced our Gateway API controller. Here's the GitHub link uh, and the QR code. Here is a high-level overview how we maps Kubernetes Gateway API objects to AWS VPC resources. Kubernetes Gateway API um, object is mapped to VPC Lattice uh, service network. In another word, it is a gateway into a VPC Lattice service network. Kubernetes HTTP route object is mapped to VPC Lattice service object. Kubernetes service object is mapped to VPC Lattice target group object. And the Kubernetes pods or endpoints are mapped to VPC Lattice targets. So what is AWS VPC Lattice service? VPC Lattice service is a unit of application running on instances, serverless, and Kubernetes pods. It consists of listeners, rules, and target group. As you see here, Kubernetes HTTP route is mapped to Lattice service, and HTTP routes routing rules are mapped to VPC lattice rules. And the HTTP route back and ref of Kubernetes services are mapped into VPC lattice target group and the Kubernetes endpoints are mapped to VPC lattice targets. So what is AWS VPC lattice service network? A VPC lattice service network is a logical boundary that is used to automatically implement service discovery and connectivity 
and apply common access and observability policies to a collection of services. As you see here, Kubernetes Gateway is mapped to a service network, and HTTP routes which have same gateway are mapped to the lattice services of that corresponding lattice service network. So for multi-clusters and multiple VPCs, AWS VPC lattice is designed to simplify and automate service connectivity and securely connect services across VPCs and their account. As you see here, there are four different EKS clusters are all connecting to a single AWS VPC lattice service network called my network. In another world, all of them will have a gateway object, my network, pointing to lattice service network called my network. So as a service provider for S1.com, VPC1 or EKS cluster one have a HTTP route defined for S1.com, which has a parent ref pointing to gateway my network. Similarly, the service provider for S2.com um, in VPC2 or EKS cluster two, it will have a HTTP route called S2.com which has a parent ref pointing to gateway my network. Similar logic applies to VPC3, EKS cluster 3, and the VPC4, and the EKS cluster 4. As a, as a service consumers, as you see here, um, you have VPC1, EKS cluster 1, uh, all the way to VPC4, cluster 4, can assume, consume all lattice services, s1.com, s2.com, s3.com, s4.com, thanks for gateway, my network. Cool, that's very cool to see VPC lattices implementation on EKS, how that works. And just to compare, we'll show how this works on GKE and our interpretation of multi-cluster gateways. So at a high level, uh, there's uh, an idea that gateway listeners in Gateway API roughly map to cloud concepts, Google Cloud concepts of a forwarding rule and a target proxy. Then again, roughly, HTTP routes and other kinds of routes roughly map to a concept of a URL map in GCP load balancing. Then finally, every Kubernetes service, each port maps to a backend service. Uh, then we have this concept of a health check, custom health check configuration. So an extension mechanism of, of Gateway API is that you have a health check policy and you can use that to apply health check, custom health check configuration. And then finally, maybe one of the most important details is individual endpoints are mapped to network endpoint groups. That, similar to EKS, allows us to uh, load balance directly to pods instead of making that kind of second hop from a node and then to a pod. So all of this roughly maps together, and you can already say, well, this looks a little complicated. Well, keep in mind, that's just one layer of translation. You kind of have to map everything together. So both the routes, gateways, you have to connect everything on that side, and then on the other side, on GCP side, everything has to be connected to. So this is just a lot of stuff that you don't really need to worry about, but that's, what ha that's what's happening behind the scenes in our GKA gateway controller. Now, an important concept to understand, and we'll be coming back to this over and over through the demos and later on in this talk, is that of a config cluster. And a config cluster in GKA means that within our cluster set, or in GKA the term is a fleet, but a cluster set in this case, uh, I, we have one cluster that's designated as the config cluster. And that means all your gateways, HTTP routes, and et cetera, are read from that single cluster. So the GK gateway controller lives, oh, 
got out of sync with what I have here. Well, that's cool. Uh, the, the GK Gateway Controller lives outside of your clusters, uh, and that's well and good. Uh, and inside of your clusters, you have gateway configuration, and in this case, we have a single config cluster where your gateway controller is pointed. Now it caught up. We'll get there eventually. Uh, hopefully, we're in sync now. Um, so we have some other clusters, but they don't matter to the GK Gateway Controller. It's just looking at a single cluster. And we'll come back to that in just a little bit. Now, our GK Gateway implementation supports two kinds of cloud load balancers, uh, high-level generalization at least. Uh, one is a regional ILB, and the other is a global external load balancer. That's what we'll be focusing on today. Uh, that's, as you'd expect, resi resilient to a zonal or regional outage and can forward traffic to any backend network or region. Uh, an important concept as we're understanding the, the demos further on is that all traffic by default is going to be routed to the closest region where there's capacity. So if you have capacity in a cluster that's close to you, you're going to be routed there. When that cluster fills up, you'll spill over to the next closest region or cluster. Now, you may be asking, well, this is all well and good, but wow, this is really out of sync. I'm sorry. Um, you may be asking, what if a cluster or region fails? That's especially problematic, right? Uh, we'll be covering lots of different failure scenarios in the demo ahead. And I'll just leave it at that, that, and I'll hand it back to Li Wen to cover how this works on VPC Lattice. Now, let me show you how a VPC Maybe Lattice just a little bit louder. API looks like. So here's the gateway class, Amazon VPC Lattice. Um, you see we have a new controller uh, called Gateway API Controller. And um, I have created a gateway object um, called KubeCom Demo. It is using gateway uh, Amazon VPC Lattice gateway class. And uh, I have also created a HTTP route called kubecom-parking. Um, in this um, kubecom uh, demo uh, parking uh, HTTP object, you see here, um, basically, I have um, for past, go to slash rate, we'll go to Kubernetes services rate, and for past slash review, we'll go to Kubernetes uh, services review. And they're all using, uh, their parent graph are all points to kubecom uh, demo. Now let me show you the traffic. So here are all the paths in this cluster. And this is HTTP route with the host name parking uh, d one kubecom demo .com. Now let me uh, exec into a Kubernetes path. And as you see here, when I curl parking d one kubecom demo .com, slash reviews, I go to one of the review parts. So, um, and these parts basically is a simple um, echo server, just reply is who I am, the part name, and give a name of the, uh, the handler. And so now when I curl slash rates, it goes to one of the rate part. As you see, it matches the name of the pod. Now let me show you um, the blue-green deployment uh, across multiple cluster. Um, in this uh, case, in cluster one, I have a HTTP route inventory. The service owner of inventory wants to deploy a new version in cluster two. Here are a few reasons. One reason is the inventory service owner want to upgrade to use new version of Kubernetes. For example, he want to use new feature in Kubernetes 1.24, but other services in cluster one, say example, app one, app two, they're not ready to upgrade to new Kubernetes version yet. 
that's one of the reason the inventory service owner I'm going to try some of my part workload in uh, new Kubernetes service uh, new Kubernetes clusters. Another reason is um, the H, uh, the inventory service owner want to double the workload, and and as you know, the cluster one it's already at its full capacity. For example, it has reached the maximum number of parts in the cluster one. So instead of scale up and try out your scalability during the production, we want to scale out. So inventory service owner want to move the workload to uh, double the workload to cluster two. So here I want to show you how that happens. Um, so now I'm creating a new cluster, a yellow cluster. Um, in the yellow cluster, as you see here, I have created inventory version two. And as you see here, the parts, they have the address of 192, 168, the private address. Um, I just want to show you the same, how we solved the overlapping IP address in the white, in the first cluster. Um, same thing, uh, I have, you know, inventory version one, I have all these parts, they all use the same uh, private address, 192.168. Okay, now let's go back to the second cluster. Here, I create a service export um, and call inventory version two. What the service export does here is, as you see here, the key thing here, I have a multi-cluster federation, Amazon VPC ladders. So our controller will look at the service export and create a target group accordingly. Now let's go back to the first cluster. Um, I have a HTTP route, HTTP route inventory. Um, as you see here, in the inventory here, um, just want to show you. Um, so right now, as I'm start deploying, uh, awaited. So 90% of the traffic will go to local version one, and 10% will go to service import version two in second cluster. Now let me show you the traffic. Okay, let's back to. Okay, um, let's go see the paths in this cluster. Let's go to one of the uh, path and. Uh, Let's see, let's go back, uh, go into the review part. Um, let's just curl the inventory um, service. You'll see here, because 90% will go to version one. And now let's run a continuous rate traffic loop here. Um, As you see here, 90% will go to version one. And uh, let's wait until we see. Okay, now we see, you know, some, you know, 10% go to version two. All right, now I'm pretty confident, inventory service owner pretty confident about the second version. That just changed the percentage. Okay, now that's changed 10% and to version one, 90% to version two to the second cluster. Let's just double check we modified this correctly. Okay, now let's demo God with me. Let's uh, apply the change. All right, we apply. Now, um, let's just confirm it's, yeah, it's 10% version one, 90% version two. Now let's see the traffic shifting. Um, now let's see, uh, the new HTTP route gets populated to VPC lattice data plane. Now you see here, it's get populated. 90% will go to version two. Cool. Am I on? I can't remember. Okay, I think I'm back. <laughs> All right, that was a great demo. Uh, let's move right back in because I know we have limited time left and I wanna show how the, these same APIs can be used on GKE. So first off, we're gonna start with two clusters in a cluster set, or GKE fleet. Uh, one of those clusters is gonna be based in the US, and the other cluster is going to be based in Europe, just right over here in the Netherlands, actually. Uh, and in both cases, uh, we're going to have the same config mirrored in both clusters. So we're going to have a gateway, HTTP route, 
and service import in all clusters. This may sound a little weird because remember, our gateway controller is only looking at that one cluster, uh, at our config cluster. But soon, this will become important. So we're starting here, and let's work on actually building this out. So first up, we'll go end to end here. We'll create a couple of clusters. I'll, you know, this, this is pretty straightforward at this point, uh, so I'll skip over that. But then once we have the clusters up, uh, we can go ahead and register them to our fleet, uh, which is just our term for a cluster set. Uh, now that they're registered, uh, we can go ahead and get gateway class, and you can say, oh, look at that. We have some gateway classes that we can use for our gateways. Uh, and we've got a few, and the ones that add, end in dash MC mean they're multi-cluster enabled. But you may remember, you know, we have more than one cluster here. There's two clusters. You probably want to see the config in both clusters. So for most of the rest of this talk, we'll be using a tool called kubectl MC. This makes it really easy to work with multiple clusters. It basically is just a loop that applies the same kubectl commands, whether it's git, apply, whatever, to multiple clusters as you configure. So if you're interested, there's a link to it there. Uh, so I'm just going to run the same command again, but with kubectl MC. And now you can see our US cluster and our EU cluster both have the same gateway classes available. All right. So We've got that set up. Let's build out our store application. This is a really simple application. It's really just echo server, but we're calling it store to make it interesting, I guess. Uh, so first off, we're going to have a service in both names, in both clusters, a deployment in both clusters, just with two pods, and then we're going to export that so it joins into this kind of global multi-cluster service that comprises endpoints from both clusters. So with that, first we're going to apply that configuration, again, in both clusters using kubectl MC. We can see it's applied first in US1, oh, sorry, uh, and second in EU1. Thank you, sorry. Um, next up, uh, we're going to get pods, uh, and in that case, uh, we're going to see that we have two pods in each cluster. These are just echo server pods, nothing fancy here, but it allows us to see when we're making a request what pod we're actually getting into. So with that applied, uh, we can also take a look at our service import. Remember, service imports give us an IP. They also give us a, a DNS name, .clusterset.local instead of .cluster.local. And so that means even without gateway, you could make a request in either cluster and be routed to endpoints across clusters. And that would work, but gateway layers on a lot more. We're going to get there. Now, since we're talking about gateway layering on so, so much more, it might be helpful from a gateway perspective to be able to target some subset. So maybe you just want to target endpoints in US clusters or EU clusters, for example. So we're going to fan this out a little bit. It's going to look a little intimidating. But we're going to create a regional service, so just a service that's unique to our US cluster that's just called Store US. It targets the same deployment the same pods, but it only exists in our US cluster or clusters, and similar in the EU cluster. So what that means is we now have three different multi-cluster services that we can reference anywhere. So we can reference our US pods, our EU pods, or all pods. All right, so we're going to apply this configuration. And first up, we're applying our US config, our US service, in our US cluster, and our EU service in our EU cluster. We've made it all this way, let's get into our gateway configuration. We're going to use our uh, L7 XLB, multi-cluster enabled gateway class. Uh, we're gonna be listening on HPS, and of course we're just using a pre-generated HPS cert, a TLS cert. Uh, next, we're going to go ahead and apply that configuration. And remember, we've applied this in both clusters. We're mirroring things in both clusters, but our gateway controller is only looking at one of those clusters. So with that said, let's take a quick look. Gateway controller is only looking at our EU cluster because that's set up to be our config cluster. So when we use kubectl MC again to take a look at these gateways, you're going to see something like a little funny. One gateway is just completely ignored. There's no address. It's not programmed. It's just, it's just sitting there. The other gateway has an address. It's programmed. It's ready to go. That's by design. It feels a little weird, but we'll get to why we might want to use that soon. All right, so next up, let's talk about our HTTP route. 
Uh, and in this case, we're going to send all traffic that starts with slash EU to our EU service, all traffic that starts with slash US to our US service, and then finally, anything else to our global store service. So pods, regardless of where they are. So we'll go ahead and apply this configuration. And with that good to go, uh, we can keep on moving and start making some curl requests. So I just took this up to personal domain. And in this case, you can see, because my requests were coming from the US, I got routed to US Central. That was the closest cluster to me. Now, if I make that same request and do slash EU, I'm going to get routed to a pod right here in the Netherlands. Now, you may be asking, what happens if a cluster fails? What happens when things break? That's, that's why we're here. How do we recover from things breaking? So a really simple way to simulate that is, let's say all the pods just disappear. They go unhealthy, any, any variation of that in one cluster. So in this case, I'm gonna make them all disappear in my US cluster and start making some requests. And regardless of what my request is to, I'm gonna be routed to Europe because that's the only place I have healthy pods left. So that's a nice kind of automatic failover for you. But what happens if we have an even more catastrophic failure? What if our config cluster goes away? What if our region goes away? What if something like really catastrophic happens? Well, I've, I've been setting this up for a while, uh, but let's say that this config cluster, you can't reach it. Something like went awfully wrong with it. Well, we've been mirroring all our configuration along, so we just make one command and we say, actually, this, this cluster is now our source of truth. Everything's the same, so we'll make one little switch. Actually, our config cluster is US1 instead of EU1. That's done, and now that becomes our source of truth. So we'll keep on moving, and I, I'm running out of time, so I'll run real th quickly through this, but we're just gonna say, regardless of where you're requesting, we're just gonna send endpoint traffic to the pods that we know are healthy, which are in US1. Uh, so we'll go ahead, make that change, and we're making that change only in our US cluster because we're assuming that's the only one in this case that we have access to. So we make that change, go ahead and make some curl requests, and whatever we're requesting, including slash EU, is going to get routed to the, the cluster that we know is healthy at this point in time. Now, I've gotta keep running here, but there's so much more that Gateway API offers. Uh, I'm really excited. Gateway API is implemented by something like 20 different implementations. This is the set of features, a subset of features that are enabled on GKE, but there's so much more available out there. Uh, there's a link there that gives you a bit more of what's available, but this is really exciting and we're just starting. There's so much more to come. So uh, I encourage everyone to get involved. Uh, the, these, this is all based on open source APIs. We showed how a couple of cloud providers are implementing these APIs, but there's tons of room for anyone here to help get involved and define the future of these APIs. So there's really three different things here. There's Gateway API. We're hoping to get that to GA this year in 2023. There's Multi-Cluster Service API. There's a lot of work going on to get that to beta this year. Uh, and then Gamma uh, is kind of the mesh initiative that bridges a lot of these concepts together. And we're hoping to formally define that, get that to experimental. We've got, I think every mesh vendor out there is involved in this. So really excited to see the convergence here. So there are all kinds of ways to get involved with Gateway API. We actually have two meetings every week. So we have weekly community meetings covering everything on Mondays, uh, Gamma meetings, that's our mesh focused thing on Tuesdays. Uh, there's actually another meeting on Fridays I forgot to add. We've got a lot of things going on. There's no shortage of ways to get involved if you're interested. Uh, and then finally, SIG multi-cluster, they meet once every two weeks and also lots of opportunities to get involved and define the future of these APIs. Uh, thanks so much for your time. Uh, we've got people here who can help answer questions uh, both from the AWS side and also if you want to reach out to Li Wen, she's available on Kubernetes Slack. Uh, if you have questions, I know we're basically at, at time, but if you do have questions, if you can line up at the microphones, uh, that'd be very helpful. Thanks so much.